Another way to classify matter is by its composition, what it's made out of. So we can divide matter into pure substances and mixtures. In a pure <coughs> substance, there's only one type of atom or molecule. They're all going to be the same in the whole substance. An example of this is water. Water is a pure substance. All the particles in water are the same. These look like little Mickey Mouse heads. We've got two white balls stuck on a red ball. So one oxygen, two hydrogen. Every single water molecule is the same. It's a pure <coughs> substance. In a mixture, you have two or more different types of particles, and they're just kind of randomly mixed together. So an example of a mixture would be something like salt and sand. You can mix it up, right? But there's sand particles and salt particles. Here's a flow chart that summarizes the, the divisions we're going to look at here. So we've got matter. We can divide it into pure substances, where all the particles are the same. We can divide it, or mixtures, where there are two or more types of particles. And then we're going to divide mixtures into homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. And we'll see that pure substances can be elements or compounds. So what's an element? An element is a pure substance, but it cannot be broken down into simpler substances. So the elements are listed on the periodic table. All of those substances contain atoms, and all the atoms in that substance are the same, and you cannot break them down into simpler substances just using chemical transformations. You can break them down using nuclear uh, transformations, but we're not going to talk about that yet. So you can't break it down into simpler substances. Compounds are what we get when we have two or more elements that are combined together in a specific way. Water is a compound. It had, contains two hydrogen atoms for every one oxygen atom, and they're combined in a specific way. It is a pure substance because all of the molecules are the same. But you can take that water and you can break it down into simpler substances. You can do this by dropping a 9-volt battery into a glass of tap water. You can try that at home. You'll see bubbles forming on both of the... Um, terminals, that's the word, the terminals of the battery. And what's happening is you're passing electric current through the water and you're causing the water to break down into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. You can't do things like that with an element. But compounds can be broken down into either simpler compounds or into elements. Mixtures are different than compounds. Because in a mixture, you've got different substances that are just together. They're not bound together in a fixed arrangement. They can be separated physically, and the proportions can vary. In a compound, the proportions are always the same. Water is always two hydrogens to one oxygen. Always, always, always. You can have a mixture, though, of hydrogen and oxygen gas, where you have a little bit of oxygen and lots of hydrogen or it could be 50-50 hydrogen and oxygen. It's a mixture, the proportions can vary. So here's an illustration of a couple of mixtures. Air. Air is a mixture. There are multiple gases in the air. There's oxygen, there's nitrogen, there's also carbon dioxide, and a little bit of argon, and then traces of other things. If there's a smell in the air, whether it's good or bad, that's a gas that is in the air that's around you, okay? Air is a mixture of different gases. Salt water, seawater, is a mixture. So here we see the water molecules, but then we also have uh, particles from the salt. There's sodium chloride, magnesium chloride. There's lots of different ionic compounds dissolved in the salt water. And you can have 
water that has just a little bit of salt or a lot of salt. If you think about like where the, um, this, like the Sacramento River Delta, right? So we have fresh water coming in and at the far end is the ocean with salt water and in between the amount of salt varies. It gets more and more salty as you get closer to the ocean. It's called brackish water. It's like partly salt water. Ocean water is a mixture of salt and water. So how do we divide up mixtures? Well, we divide these up by how uniformly they mix. Some things mix together really well and other things not so much. Um, homogeneous mixtures. Again, we're using prefixes. The prefix homo means the same. So homogeneous means it mixes the same throughout. So if you look at a homogeneous mixture, the composition of it on the top and the bottom and all throughout is all going to be the same it's going to look very uniform. You're not going to see bubbles or chunks or layers or anything. Can anyone think of an example of a homogeneous mixture? Kool-Aid. Very good. So you make Kool-Aid, right? And you've got, the, there's the, all the color in there, of course. That's, I think, the primary peel, that and the sugar. So you've got sugar, and you've got bright food coloring, and you've got water. And you mix it up and it's all red, cherry Kool-Aid's my favorite, you know, and it's red at the top and it's red at the bottom and it's sweet all over, it all looks the same. But if we zoom in, we see that there are sugar particles and there are water molecules and there are food coloring molecules and they can vary in proportion. You know, some moms make the Kool-Aid with less sugar. So the kids just drink more of it then, right? Mm -hmm. So you can vary the proportions. It's a mixture, but it looks the same throughout. Heterogeneous, the prefix hetero means different. So this mixture does not mix up well. There are different phases. It's a non-uniform mixture. Can anyone think of a non-uniform mixture? Like water and oil. So oil and water or vinegar and oil, like an Italian salad dressing, right? You shake it up, and what happens? All the oil comes to the top, and the vinegar part goes to the bottom. And then, in that dressing, you also have little floating things, right? Which my son Andrew would not eat, because he doesn't eat anything that looks like a leaf. But you've got these little pieces of parsley and little flakes of spices, and you can see different sections. That's a heterogeneous mixture. Okay, so let's practice this. Classify each type of matter as a pure substance or a mixture. And then, after we decide that, we have to divide it, um, pure substances into elements or compounds, mixtures into homogeneous or heterogeneous. So first we decide pure substance or mixture. The mercury in a thermometer, pure substance. Is it an element or a compound? Element. Now, some of you might be saying, how the heck am I supposed to know that? That's a good question. Well, the word mercury, mercury was one of the element names I asked you to memorize. Mercury is on the periodic table. If they're asking you about something that's on the periodic table, it's an element, okay? And some of these questions that you will see in lecture, I wouldn't ask you on an exam because I think, well, yeah, maybe most of the students would get that, but some of them, you know, it just depends on your background, whether you're familiar with some of these things. But that's a pure substance, it's an element. Exhaled air. That's going to be a mixture. Now, what kind of a mixture? Homogeneous or heterogeneous? Homogeneous. Except, I'm sorry, I have to say this. There's an expression, blowing chunks. <laughs> if you're blowing chunks, would that be homogeneous? No. 
That would be vomiting. That's not really exhaling air. I'm sorry. I lived with little boys far too long. Um, on to the next one. Chicken noodle soup. Mixture or pure substance? Mixture. Homogeneous or heterogeneous? Heterogeneous. There's noodles and there's chicken and there's broth, right? And they're not all blended together. Now, something like tomato soup, where it's all been pureed and blended together, it's smooth and the same throughout, that would be homogeneous. But chicken noodle soup would be heterogeneous. How about sugar? Pure substance. And that, again, I would not necessarily um, expect to be obvious to everyone. Is it an element or a compound? It's a compound. For one thing, you're not going to find sugar on the periodic table. Um, but it's a compound. Table sugar is sucrose. It has a particular uh, chemical formula. It's a combination of hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon in a particular arrangement, and, and that's sugar. Any questions? So this is just a summary. So matter can be a pure substance or a mixture. A pure substance can be an element or a compound. Mixtures can be homogeneous or heterogeneous. And this is a very, very important point down here. Mixtures can be composed of two or more elements, two or more compounds, a combination of both. Okay, So a mixture could be composed of anything, really.